Hey guys, I want to talk a little bit about something that I and I think many other technicians find frustrating um, in the workforce, and that's getting sent to you know, whether it's manufacturer training or um, a piece of equipment specific training class. Uh, we very much appreciate those opportunities, and they are really great in, in many ways, but one of the very frustrating things about that is you go, you get sent across the country, you spend two or three days um, getting an enormous amount of information thrown at you that, that, that you can't possibly retain, and then you're flown back home and thrown back into the field, and you never touch that equipment you never see it or it's several years later and then all of a sudden your employer says you know um, well send him out there he's been to school he went to school he's an expert so um, it's very frustrating um, it's hard to retain knowledge that you're not reinforcing with real life very soon after so one thing I've always tried to do, and it's worked well for me, and I think it could work well for a lot of you, is to reverse engineer that. Do it the other way around on your own. And what I mean by that is, as you're in your first few years, as you work on something new or are sent to do something new with your mentor or journeyman, go do it. Learn everything you can from him or her that day and when you get home then crack open your books try to find literature resources on it and read it right after this way you've accomplished the same thing of, of learning the academic side of it and then reinforcing it with hands-on experience you're just doing it the other way around and man is that a great way to have those synapses fire in your brain and, and cement some of that and retain some of that knowledge. So, you know, perfect example. I, I remember doing that when I started out and the first time I was sent to, to clean out a cooling tower. You know, there's nothing glamorous or, or very difficult about doing that, but I didn't know anything about how cooling towers operated. And I scraped that thing out and washed the fill over the next few days. And um, I went home that night and or those few nights and it's all in here you know this is the uh, refrigeration air conditioning technology the, the big monster textbook everyone gets in school and you can get this on Amazon and and I went to those chapters and I, I, I read through those chapters all about cooling towers and it all it all made sense you know because I had seen it that day I had watched it that day and the things I didn't quite know the next day when I went to wrap up I went and found it. I went, and, you know, um, I looked harder at the piping arrangement, and, and and it made sense what I had read the night before. Um, so, things like that really help you move ahead quick. It's very dry and difficult to just read from from front to back on that. Um, but if you imagine what you would learn in, in a whole year in the field, if every night you came home and you read a chapter on whatever you worked on that day. And um, you, you had just had hands on that same day. The amount of knowledge you retain, I bet is, you know, I don't have numbers on it, but you know, it has to be a significant percentage higher um, of what you retain than if you had just read the book first and then hoped one one day in the next five years you got to go look at it. I mean, you can almost guarantee you're not gonna remember everything. So um, that's always kind of been my my personal learning regimen. And I, I add a lot more to that. Um, I was a little older when I started this. I had to do something to, to get ahead of the curve. I didn't have, um, 12 years of doing this before I was 30 to just get by and you know just hands-on because eventually yeah you'll you'll get pretty good you know if you've got a couple decades to to not read anything and do it every day but I didn't have that luxury so um, I still do that actually that book I just showed you I do try to read five I don't know five to ten pages every night and I start page one you know and and try to go 
try to go all the way to the end of the book. And then when I finish the whole book, I'm gonna start back at page one again. And I think that just always having a, a set amount of pages like that that you read, a manageable amount that doesn't put you to sleep, you'll retain bits of that over the years. Now you combine that with also doing what I said of doing the focused reading on what you did that day. And you, you're really gonna start getting somewhere with that. If you wanna add another layer to that, this whole explosion of uh, social media, YouTube, and podcasting in the HVAC community has been really cool. And uh, there's a lot you can learn from it. So if you haven't subscribed you know, to Brian Orr's podcast, the HVAC School, uh, do that. It's a great way. Uh, um, I like to fill the time between service calls with listening to those episodes. I like to maximize my learning potential. In a, uh, and I find that is wasted time when you're driving um, from spot to spot. Me in particular, my, my employer, I'll often have uh, one to three hours in between of, of windshield time between calls. Uh, we have a huge territory in the state, so uh, it's a great way for me to feel um, a little more accomplished throughout the day by doing that and making the best time, of, best use of my time. Um, and there's a lot of great YouTube resources too, you know, Steve Arden and uh, uh, the HVAC school and, and anything with Jim Bergman. You know, if you guys are looking at the True Tech Tool videos and, and I mean, there's just a plethora of, of gold out there. There's a lot of garbage, but there's a lot of really good stuff. So you can create your own multimedia uh, uh, curriculum. You don't have to, to go into debt, go into school. If that's not in the cards for you, geographically or financially, uh, it's not an excuse to not be doing extracurricular learning. You can create your own curriculum just as good as going to a community college um, with a few books from Amazon and an and internet connection at home. So, guys, with that, um, well, I could show you real quick. Here's an example. Uh, when I said whatever you did that day, I mean literally whatever you did that day. There's books for everything you can imagine. And uh, I've got a couple right here. Uh, you know, if I work on a pump that day, uh, if I had an issue with psychometrics, something that, that uh, intrigued me about a service call where there was humidity issues, uh, controls, hydronics, heating and cooling, building environments, Facilities, maintenance, principles of construction, motor controls, even rigging. I mean, there's books on freaking rigging. Uh, all the ESCO books are really great. They're short, easy reads on uh, lots of residential equipment too. For those of you that, that think I'm only really talking about commercial equipment here, because I'm not. And then I've, uh, I've got more over here. Uh, contractor licensed uh, study guides and uh, I even have a whole series of textbooks on uh, some of the other building trades don't uh, don't limit what you're learning to just HVAC too because remember we're we're dealing with building systems here now this is a little bit more uh, on the commercial side but you need to understand the synergy between all those trades in that building in that envelope and how they work together you need to have a thorough understanding of um, the, the construction of that building the building materials the the architecture the um, different plumbing systems water supply systems uh, the electrical grid and how it ties in and transformers and I mean the more you can know about all of that the, the, the better you can truly troubleshoot uh, don't have tunnel vision in this trade you need to be able to step back and look at a building through the lens of it being a full system a, an organism that has many moving parts and um, it's not always the HVAC it may be something outside of that that's out of your control uh, and if you didn't look at it as a whole system you may miss that and waste time so with that guys that's just a little bit of advice on how I've um, tried to jump ahead in the last few years and uh, stay sharp so guys I hope you get something out of that and uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks